mealworms, lots of them. And weevils, a personal favorite. Tenacious reproducers, high in fiber too. But they're just a nuisance compared to this little lady. One female cockroach can produce an extended family of 100,000 in just a year. And as I suspected, a little protein in the pasta. Meal moth larvae love rigatoni because hollow tubes provide a great little cave on which to suspend their silk webbing. Tripp thinks he can escape the bugs. Well, he can run, but he can't hide. Because they're always an ingredient in our lunch. In fact, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has no choice but to make allowances for bugs. You know, I brought some stuff that I thought you might be interested in. It's the FDA uh, manual. And it's actually... Okay. You're, you're, you're going to be pretty interested in this because it just tells you, you know, how many insects it's okay to have in food. You're going to find this uh, pretty interesting. For example, in uh, canned corn, you can have up to three millimeter larvae and cast skins what? Of, of corn borers and uh, corn ear worms. Broccoli, up to 60 or more aphids and or thrips and or mites per 110 or less dead insects, whole or equivalent. Contains 13 or more insect heads per 100 rejects, moldy dead insects, insect excretia, as determined by macroscopic sequential of any size per 100 grams of drained mushroom. Average of 225 insect fragments per 225 Average grams. 475 or more insect fragments per 50 10 grams. 10 or less dead insects whole or equivalent. 50 or more aphids, thrips, and or mites per 100 grams. And the list goes on and on in thrilling detail. Bugs are sort of inside every fold of your life. And remember, we are what we eat. I really don't mind sharing my dinner with bugs, but I'm not sure I'll ever get used to sleeping with them. Then again, when I'm out on the road, a little company isn't such a bad idea. Tonight, I'm not alone. Bed bugs not only invade our lives, but they invade each other. And I'm gonna sacrifice a little blood so that you can see one of the most amazing mating behaviors on the planet that happens in motel beds or your own. This is the ultimate invasion of the body snatchers. First, a female penetrates my flesh. She's tanking up for the ride. Or perhaps she's cushioning her body for the assault to come. Now the male sniffs out her bubble of blood. Very sexy. She tries to throw him off. But he invades her stabbing her abdomen with his sharp, curved penis. Over and over. She doesn't have genitals. His sperm finds its way to her eggs. But he's got some competition. Rather than fight each other, they seem to team up to subdue her.
Scientists call this romantic little interlude traumatic insemination. I'm here at the University of Massachusetts to visit a devoted scientist named Cliff Desch. He spent his entire career studying strange invaders of the flesh. And I'm here to find out if my personal ecosystem is hosting any of these little guests. Hey, how you doing? Good, Good to see you. Nice to meet you. You know why I really came here. It's to ask whether or not, if you wouldn't mind. I don't mind. And you want to check them out, huh? Yeah, we'll just, we can do it right now. We need this high-tech piece of equipment called a bobby pin. And then you scrape your forehead hard. You just scrape hard. Scrape hard. Oh, hey, yeah. that side of the floor. Here we go. Does oh. that, that look pretty good? Oh, it looks great. Yes. Yeah. What's it look like? You don't want to know. Oh, come on, come on. Looks like debris from a body. <laughs> These things are so tiny, you can only see them through a microscope. Cliff projects my skin cells and earwax onto the wall for my viewing pleasure. I've heard about it, I've read about it, but I'm not entirely convinced that bugs have actually taken up residence on me. Maybe I don't have it. Uh oh, what's that? Side view. Oh, there you got one. Wow. Oh. This tiny cousin of the spider is called a face mite. Very strange. This mite bathes in my oily pores and sucks up my dead skin cells for nourishment. That's the legs. Now that's the mouth, right? That's the mouth, yeah. Oh, they're really beautiful. Look at that. Pretty neat. My face provides room and board for perhaps hundreds of these invaders, but they seem to do no harm. And the great thing about this twitching, pulsing, vibrant piece of life is that it's living on me and it's living on you and it's it's just part of life isn't it just about every face you see is a mite habitat we're not born with them we acquire them through contact with others once on our face they dive head first into the nearest pore or hair follicle There, they eat, have sex, and happily make more mites. Face mites have a lot of talents, but they're lacking in one area. These mites do not have an anus. They, they don't defecate, so they're very clean. Our flesh is alive. It is a land colonized by over 300 million living organisms. Bacteria, fungi, arachnids. I don't know what it makes you think, but I'm gonna go wash my face. But no matter how hard you scrub, you can't get rid of bugs. They're everywhere. We've seen them in the air and in our homes, burrowed into our food and embedded in our skin. But it's not over yet. I've been saving the best for last. I'm about to throw myself into the middle of one of the most disgusting invasions ever. All I have to do is set up the perfect conditions. A couple of flies is a tiny little problem. The fact is, a tiny little fly problem can quickly get out of hand. Especially if you give them what they want. And I happen to know exactly what they want. 
When you do that, well, the results can be amazing. Voila, a big wad of liver and a little sugar water on the side. Go for it. Be fruitful and multiply. Since today I'm Lord of the Flies, I've decided to release a male and a female here in fly heaven. Just these two parents can breed 600 maggots over their short lives. Left unchecked, they and their descendants could cover the entire earth in just a year. This combination of being so pervasive and so sexually diligent makes the housefly one of the most formidable invaders of all. What better place for laying your eggs than a juicy slab of decaying meat? The eggs usually hatch within 24 hours into maggots. These not yet flies are built to eat and eat and eat. Hooks in their mouths allow them to scale mountains of flesh. They breathe through organs in their rear ends so they can bury their heads into an all-you-can-eat buffet. This gluttony serves them well, sustaining them through their next adventure. They harden into a cocoon-like pupa. And then, a few days later, the great escape. Amazingly, they break open the shell by inflating a special sac in their heads like a balloon. And then they squeeze themselves out. Now they are adults, complete with wings, eyes, and genitals. They are ready to mate and start the cycle over again. And if you think that's overwhelming, check out how they prefer to dine. They fly from one meal to the next, as if sampling hors d'oeuvres. They land on something delicious, feces perhaps, or your picnic lunch, and regurgitate a special digestive liquid that tenderizes the meal. Then they lap it up with their sponge-like mouth. There's no telling where a fly has been and what goodies it's regurgitating onto your food. I've heard the average housefly carries about two million bacteria on its mouth and feet. Me being me, I just had to find out what it's like to have thousands of these filthy invaders crawling around and swarming. Already, they've multiplied, but they've only just begun. The mating game for them turns into a waiting game for me. After two weeks in the real world, this is what happens. Here in Fly Heaven, it only takes a blink of an eye. I've done a lot of gross things in my life, but this has got to top it all. But it's not all bad news. Life without flies would be strange indeed. They're phenomenal recyclers, breaking down plants and animals and turning them into something new. And that's the way it is with most bugs. While they might seem like vicious invaders, from their perspective, they're just looking for a good meal and a way to